What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. I'm AJ. Today we're going to go over every single input on a basic material node so you never forget how to use them again. Hey guys, I went to make a video about lerp nodes the other day before I realized I didn't even remember how my own auto material worked. That's why I went back and decided to study hard about every input on a basic material node chart so you don't have to. Unreal Engine can be really overwhelming, so even if you've already learned all this stuff, if you're anything like me, if you go even a week without practice, your brain will just dump it all right back out like you never learned it at all. I scoured all the boring Unreal Engine documentation, all the forums I could find, and all the YouTube videos just so I could bring you this one comprehensive video. This video is designed for you to be able to come back at any point you need and just jump ahead to any section. Each section self-contained and simple, and each one uses the briefest example I could possibly find for each input. I don't want to take up too much of your time, so with that, let's get into it. Alright, the first thing we're going to have to do is create our material. Go ahead and go into the content drawer, right click, and choose new material. Name this material whatever you want, I'm going to call mine my example material. Press enter. Now double click on this and it'll open up your materials blueprint. This node here, the material result node, is what we're going to be going over in this video, starting with base color. Alright, the base color does exactly what it sounds like it does. It controls the color of your material. Go ahead and click and drag from this node and find a constant 3 vector. Hit enter. Now double click on the constant 3 vector, choose a color, and make sure you raise the value or it won't stick. So I'm going to go with green. Press OK and make sure you hit apply to compile. Now go back to your main window, click on the object you want to add your material to, go in the details panel, click on the drop down, find your material and press enter and it'll apply that to your material. Now for a more advanced color effect, you can right click and add another constant 3 vector node, select another color, I'm going to select red raise the value so that it sticks, and then we can add a texture. You can find a bunch in starter content, but I'm going to select T underscore Perlin noise. And now find a lerp node. This is going to allow you to switch back and forth between the two colors depending on the texture. So plug the first color into A, the second color into B, the texture into alpha, and then plug the lerp node into base color. Now you'll have this multicolor effect based on the texture on your material. Don't forget to hit apply to compile the material. Now you'll see that it's changed to this kind of rusty looking effect. All right, now let's move on to roughness. Just like base color, roughness does exactly like it sounds. It controls the perceived roughness of the material surface. To get started, let's click and drag from roughness, find a constant vector, press enter. Now we can select any value between zero and one. Zero being absolutely shiny and one being absolutely rough. Now you can also take a texture like we did earlier, drag that in, and drag the RGB pin into roughness instead of the constant vector. This will cause the roughness to follow the pattern of the texture. Press apply to compile. And now our material has this roughness to its surface. Alright, now let's move on to metallic. For this example, let's change roughness back to zero so we can see the effect. Metallic controls whether or not the surface of the material appears to be metallic. Let's click and drag from metallic, select a constant vector, press enter, and now select a value between 0 and 1, 0 being not metallic, and 1 being completely metallic. We don't typically use values in between 0 and 1 for metallic. It's either all metal or none. Click apply, and you'll see that your material has become metallic. Alright, those were some of the more basic material controls, so let's move on to some of the more advanced ones, starting with Specular. Specular controls the level of shine a non-metallic material has, and how reflective it is. Specular works together with roughness, and its default value is 0.5. Let's click and drag from Specular, find a constant node, press enter, and then select a value between 0 and 1. 0 being the least amount of shine, and 1 being the most amount of shine. Now to see this effect, we're going to have to change metallic back to 0. Now if we put specular to 1, we'll see that it has all this shine 
Like I said, it works together with roughness, so you can play with the values and see what you come up with. Press apply to apply it to your material, and now your object has some shine to it. Now the next material input we're going to talk about is anisotropy, but we can't talk about anisotropy without tangent. This is because anisotropy controls directional highlights and elongated reflections based on a directional map that tangent provides. Tangent takes a texture that has proper UV mapping and creates that directional map. Now to get started, we're going to have to use a material that has a proper UV map. One material that does meet these requirements is M underscore metal underscore chrome. Let's go ahead and select that from our starter content, click and drag it onto our mesh. Now that we're back in our blueprint, let's click and drag from anisotropy and create a constant node. Now with this constant node, we can select a value between negative one and one. I'm gonna choose 0.5, and this won't do anything yet. We need to set up our tangent. So click and drag from tangent and find an append vector node. Press enter. What the append vector node does is it takes two constant variables and turns them into x and y coordinates. So let's find two constants and enter in some coordinates. I'm just going to put an arbitrary 1 and 3 and connect these to the a and the b of the append vector node. Now when we adjust our anisotropy value, we should see the change in our highlights you can see that it's moving and stretching in different ways. This is useful for materials like brushed metal or spinning records, things that reflect light a certain way. If we click and drag this away and go back to our static mesh, we can see the effect of this as we change the value. Hit apply, and you'll see the highlights change directions. Next, we're gonna talk about normal. Normal gives the illusion of finer surface details like scratches or dents without actually changing the geometry of the material. It changes the way light reacts to the material's surface and allows for more detailed shading. Now to get normal going, all we have to do is go to our starter content in the textures folder and find any of these normal maps, the ones that have an N after them. I'm gonna choose T underscore detail underscore rocky. And just drag the RGB pin into normal and you'll see the effect on the surface. Go ahead and click apply. Go back to your material and you'll see the effect it had. Now we're going to go over emissive color. Emissive color controls how much light is radiated from a material surface. It's used to create things such as glowing neon signs, lasers, things like that. So we're going to drag out from emissive color, find a constant 3 vector, and to use that to make a color. I'm going to choose blue, raise the value up, and the brightness and saturation will control the level of brightness and intensity of the light. So we'll click OK, hit apply, go back to our material, and you can see with the sun in the position that it is, you can tell that it's glowing. When it's bright out, you can't tell quite as much. When you bring the sun down, the object glows. Now we're gonna go over world position offset. This is used to dynamically animate an object in relation to the world it's in. It's used for things like moving platforms or making objects spin and things like that. I'm gonna show you the most basic example I could come up with to make an object move so you can see the effect of world position offset. So to start, click and drag from world position offset and create a constant four vector and hit enter. Now we're gonna double click on it and give the red channel a value of 50. Then we're going to create a time node to make this happen over time. And then we're going to create a sign node. We're going to connect the time node to the input of the sign node. And the sign node is going to create a smooth oscillating value between negative one and one over time. Now we're going to create a multiply node. And we're going to connect the output of the sign node to the B input of the multiply node. We're going to connect the white RGB output of the constant 4 vector to the A input of the multiply node. Plug the multiply node into the world position offset. Now you can see the objects moving left and right. If we apply this and look at our material, you can see that we're using a static mesh that's made up of multiple meshes, but you can see the gist of how this input works. Next is ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is meant to simulate the self-shadowing of a material's crevices in its surface. I am going to skimp over this one because this method is semi-deprecated. It only works with baked-in light sources and does not work with movable light sources per the Unreal Engine documentation. 
Now I'm not going to show an example of this one, but if your lighting is not movable and you do plan on baking your lighting, you can grab any ORDP texture map from the Quixel bridge and plug the red channel into ambient occlusion, bake your lighting, and then you'll see the effects. There are many better ways to implement ambient occlusion with today's lighting. The next one we're going to go over is pixel depth offset. This is used to blend objects with other intersecting objects where they meet each other. To visualize this one, I'm going to undock my blueprint so that I can see what's happening to my static mesh. To start, let's click and drag our static mesh in so we can see how it interacts with the ground. You can see it has a very sharp line. Let's make this a bit bigger. Now we're going to add a scalar parameter and we're going to give it a value of 20. Then we're going to create a dither temporal AA node and we're also going to create a multiply node to combine them. Now connect the scalar parameter to the A input of the multiply node and connect dither temporal AA to the B input of the multiply node and connect the multiply node to the pixel depth offset input and hit apply. Now you see how your material starts to fade into the ground. This is really good for blending things like rocks on grass and cliffs and things like that. Do note that there does seem to be a bug with Unreal Engine 5 where it did not work without Nanite for me. So just enable Nanite if you want to see this effect. Alright, the last one I want to talk about is Opacity. Opacity controls the transparency or translucency of an object and determines how much light can pass through it. If we try to use opacity on our example material, you'll see that it's grayed out here. So let's make a new material. Let's call it opacity material. Open up that blueprint and go to the details panel for the material. Now under blend mode, change it from opaque to translucent and you'll see that opacity becomes available. Now click and drag from opacity and create a constant vector. On this constant vector, select a value between 0 and 1, with 0 being completely invisible and 1 being completely visible. You can also select a texture from our starter content like we did with previous inputs. Find a texture that uses only black and white areas, because the black and white represent zeros and ones. I'm going to use T underscore Perlin noise. Click and drag that in. Now right click and create a multiply node. Connect one color channel of the texture to the A input of the multiply node and then connect the multiply node to the opacity input. Now this multiply node serves as your control for how opaque this material is and the opacity is based on the texture. Now that we have our opacity set up, let's go back into the main menu, go to starter content, shapes, click and drag a shape out, then go back to our opacity material, click and drag it onto the shape and you'll see that our shape is now translucent. Alright, if you made it this far, thank you. I hope this video was helpful to you. And remember, this was made as a reference, so if you ever forget what one of these inputs do, just come back to this video and find the appropriate timestamp. Remember to subscribe to Unreal Apprentice for more videos like this, and I'll see you on the next one.